good. So for today, we have uh, to spend uh, 10 minutes at the beginning just to close up uh, the, um, the topic of the last class about the uh, um, types of projects uh, that you could propose. Uh, we still have uh, uh, to have a look uh, at uh, the responses that you gave uh, during the survey time ago. Now it's nearly one month ago and uh, uh, to see whether some of the idea that you put forward time ago uh, could be valid or could give us some kind of suggestion. Hmm? This will be a quick part that didn't fit in the last class uh, uh, available time. And then we start uh, revising. It will take probably three different three classes uh, time. Uh, in, we'll start revising together the process that we have to follow during the course. Okay. So uh, not just uh, having an idea and starting to code on the morning after, but trying to formalize a process that we could follow all together no, with, with different steps uh, for getting to the result with the, mm, you know, with a sufficient level of quality and consistency. But first things first. So first of all, <coughs> I, uh, I pasted here Is it too small? Yes, it is. So probably we should make us. Make it a bit larger. Okay. Uh, I pasted here the responses that I got in the, uh, in the um, survey. And uh, I want just to read them. It, we are not here to tell which one was the best or not. We're trying to do the exercise of fitting these ideas with the criteria, with session criteria that we set forward in the last class. Namely, uh, a project should be composed of the four main steps. Uh, all of them should be present uh, and uh, should be relevant to the uh, sustainability topic and uh, should, uh, as much as possible, uh, say, ex um, show the features about the six uh, different features that we uh, we mentioned for an MEI project. Mm -hmm. But the key aspects are the four steps and the um, relevance to the topic of the year. So um, the first one, I'd like uh, to create an automation or augmented system for shop managers or industries, environment, backend software, or augmented reality. So this is not really a project idea yet. I read this as an area in which I'd like to think about project ideas. There's no I, specific idea here yet. Hmm? Uh, what's about, uh, uh, where's the sustainability? What I'm sensing, what, I'm, what am I acting? Hmm? So it's not, there's not enough information uh, in, in a definition like this. Uh, furthermore, you're talking about uh, uh, augmented system, augmented reality, which are technology words. We don't need technology words to explain what we want to do with users. Uh, I'd, li I'd like to design an automated system which has low energy requirements, useful for home users, but scalable to shops and mall industries. Yes, I'd like to, but which one are you talking about? Okay, this is just wishful thinking. I'd like to have an idea about something. So you define the topic, but you're still don't say, don't tell which is your idea. What are you going to build? Hmm? Something, okay, but something is not specific enough. The smart environment for sustainability should be peaceful, secure, and comfortable for the user, but at the same time should be able to save habitat resources and improve the quality of the environment. This gives uh, qualities, attributes, adjectives about what a smart environment for sustainability should be. Hmm? So once we see one, we can check uh, whether it's peaceful, whether it's secure, whether it's comfortable, and so on. Hmm? But this uh, doesn't tell us what kind of an environment. Hmm? So right now we didn't have met, we, we haven't met an idea yet. Hmm? Just uh, domains in which to develop an idea or characteristics that a possible idea should have. Hmm? 
uh, I'm thinking of, the, uh, in order to reduce the cost of electricity bill, I'm thinking of designing an intelligent element in the house in which all lights and appliances are connected to movement sensors. The machines are, only, are on only when sensors detect movements. And so this is actually describes a functionality. We don't need uh, um, to talk about movement sensors or technology like that, uh, but the idea is uh, all lights and appliances are, are on when movements are detected or some, something like that. So this could be a type of project. Let's check, does it have a sensing part? Yes, it talks about uh, sensing whether people are there and or whether they're moving. Does it have an acting part? Um, yes, because it switches lights on and off. Is it relevant to sustainability? Yes, because it saves energy in some way. But does it have an interaction part? Does the user interact in any way with the system? Do they exchange information? No. Reasoning. Does it have any intelligence, adaptation, customization, self-learning, or whatever? No. Huh? What it's uh, described here is just one motion sensor connected to a relay and a lamp, something that you can do with a wire, not with a computer. Okay? So it lacks, uh, in this kind of project, is missing some interaction and is missing some uh, um, reasoning. Hmm? So it's not complete as a project proposal. Then, fo focusing your attention on the short lifespan problem, don't tell me, uh, which I'm older than you, and so you should realize something which is not strongly related with the last technology, but that can do every automatic and routine action instead of a human. I think at the most since can be a nice answer for sustainability. Again, me too. We could agree on, the, on this sentence, but there is no solution being proposed, and no system being described. Something that reminds me what I have to do in order to optimize the energy used. For instance, through a voice that asks to me if I've taken daily the necessary proteins, and it can also elaborate all this information, giving greater awareness. So I, I have trouble in understanding this one because I don't understand what kind of energy he's talking about. Is he talking about my body energy? Probably yes. Hmm? So it's a reminder system. A reminder system, good. Uh, it's reminding is a, a way of interaction, of interacting with the user, giving information at a given time. But it doesn't have any sensing part, so does it in, in some way sense how much energy I'm using, probably? It could do, it's not described here. How much protein I'm taking would be very hard to detect to sense automatically. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is some probably reasoning talking about the elaborated information, but I, I only see some elaboration, some computing, some reasoning, and some interaction, hmm? but the other parts are missing. And the relevance to sustainability can be there, but it needs to be explored. So this is a, probably a second uh, partial idea hmm, that could be improved uh, to, to describe better. Uh, you know, it's not fair what I'm doing here. Huh? Because I'm evaluating these uh, ideas uh, with some criteria that you didn't know before when I asked you for this idea. So, but just for exercise uh, about uh, letting you filter your own ideas. Something user-friendly we communicate with the sensor with the ambient and the user. This doesn't mean anything to me. It's void. Uh, smart system for sustainability should be simple to use. Again, it's a quality, it's not a functionality. It should make users' life easier, yes. And at the same time, it, is, it has to be good for the environment. Okay, uh, right now, up to now, we didn't say anything. In order to create it, we try to understand which are the principal users' needs or which are our more frequent failings when it comes to the environment, and then come up with the idea that fits them more. This is a, a description of, of a process, of the design process, how I would like to, to get an idea. But there's no idea yet. From a technology point of view, the system could be anything as long as it doesn't get to be cumbersome and practical. Again, 
good uh, talks, but, but no specific project. Electronic signature for the cash register to the phone when you buy something. No more printed paper. So this has a very specific uh, idea about sustainability, reducing the amount of printed paper. Hmm? Okay, so the goal is surely uh, uh, in sustainability. Uh, smart antiphone, which allows you to see token with an open, oh, so these are probably two different ideas packed into one. Hmm? So electronic seed sent from the cash register to the phone when you buy something. Uh, it's not much of an ambient uh, intelligent stuff. It's more of an interaction project, a mobile, what, what we call the mobile only project. Something that ev everything is on your smartphone. You don't need the collaboration of, of the environment, of the ambient, uh, of any other device in the ambient. Hmm? So it's limited. The, the goal of saving paper is good, but uh, we, sh we, sh we should try to make it hmm, more complete. The second one was a smart entry form, which allows you to see token with and open the door to whoever ring the bell from your PC or smartphone. So this uh, is under the category of the smart doorbell. There are already products that do that. So people ring the bell, and instead of uh, uh, standing up and going to see or uh, to, to, to check who's there, uh, you, you, see, you see the picture on, the, um, on, the, um, on your smartphone. I don't see the sustainability part here. Because hmm? what, what, what am I saving? My steps? Hmm? Probably the other way around should be. You need, you need to run longer. Uh, traffic lights where downtime is also calculated on the number of cars in the queue. Where there are more cars down, where there are more cars, downtime lasts less seconds. Uh, for citizens, it means a reduction of pollution, and then the same in Italian. Um, this is not complete, but it's also a good idea, a specific idea, where we have a very specific, uh, clear goal about reducing, reducing the pollution, but also probably the um, the gas waste, no, the, the, um, the amount of, of, uh, of gasoline that you consume while you are standing at the, at the, at the red light uh, in the car. And by act, so by act, you are sensing where are cars and you're acting on the traffic lights in some way. You are saving. You are reasoning because you need to compute a good compromise. You cannot always give the green to the same street. What is only lacking in this project is the interaction part. What is the active part of the user? Hmm? So, but all the rest uh, would be, for uh, all the other aspects, it would be good. It's only the interaction that is missing here. Uh, a system able to keep track of the amount of waste generated, for example, in our university, will track the amount of waste in the recycling bins and in the general one to encourage the reduction of the last one and the use as a norm of the recycling bin. The student will have will be able daily to know how much our environment is changing in terms of waste reduction. So again, sustainability, yes, for the topic. Uh, sensing, uh, yes. Interacting, yes, because we are, sensing, yes, because we are trying to sense the waste in the bins. Uh, interacting, yes, because you are, let's say, showing information to the user. I don't see any acting here. So the acting is missing. The uh, reasoning is also weak, I would say, just aggregating data. And so it's, it's incomplete from this point of view. Uh, another warning that I want to uh, highlight for this idea is that track the amount of waste. Is it easy to do? Is it feasible? Can it be done easily or not? So probably, no, this could be a good idea, but uh, we should be sure that we are not uh, entering a, to a complex project, something that is too complex. If you want then to differentiate between paper and plastic, how do you, do you measure that? Do you weight it? Do you uh, measure the volume or whatever? So it can become complex uh, in, if we don't find, uh, you know, uh, shortcuts to make it a project that is feasible in a couple of months. So. The, the general filter here would be uh, it's lacking uh, uh, acting and reasoning, and probably the sensing part tends to be too difficult. Hmm? Probably. It's useful to have the basic information about what we are going 
what we are going to work in case we haven't seen something similar before to help us to study do project better mm, okay I, it's not very relevant i didn't prove financial support new ecological ISO, ISO, transport, electric car, electric buses, and as well bike. I'd like to know what the nearest ecological area is. I'd also look for a system we can manage the use and the waste of electricity in the houses. So there are three sentences here. The first one is just uh, about uh, uh, financially, so the market about the re renewables. There's nothing that we, we can do on the technology side here. The second one is knowing what the nearest uh, ecological area is. Uh, it's again another example of a smartphone only application so you just have a, your google maps uh, with some point of interest that are in this, in this case ecological areas and everything is closed under your phone uh, so it's not an ambient intelligence system and uh, manage the use and the waste of electricity in the houses it's not specific so i i don't know what you have in mind here the idea of solving the problem of air pollution in metropolises oh yes which, which idea? Because it's nice having an idea for solving this problem, but which is the idea? Domestic machinery that turn waste into energy or items, you will get rich probably, but how? Self-driving cars, uh, whom indoor is comfortable like a living room. These people is looking forward, really. And uh, <laughs> accurate cooking machine that prepares food that provides waste uh, from waste it I don't know if it says that it's able to dispose of it automatically or if it's trying to create food from waste <laughs> I, but okay uh, you would like to use a marked rucksack using solar energy mounted into it to recharge electronic equipment internal and external okay this is an example of what they call an hardware only project you put a some pol solar panels or some uh, dynamos in, in an equipment and generates energy and that's it that's all hardware there's no interaction there's no sensing there's no acting uh, there's no reasoning hmm? so it's it may be a component of a system not the whole system manage the heating through sensors in order to have the optimal solution where the user will not be in the building for a long time this is what a heating system is already supposed to do we are not acting uh, creating a way to collect almost expired so this is one idea but it's very limited just uh, optimizing the working of a plant electrical uh, heating plant in this case which is disconnected from the user no interaction no se a little sensing yes a little sensing acting on the but no no interaction no reasoning hmm? creating a way to collect almost expired foods or or leftovers from people in order to help who needs them but it's not i don't see the it's a good idea for sustainability in general but i don't see the technology part in it it's more of a service organization of services here and transportation create an app where, where workers can organize themselves in order to use the minimum number of cars uh, it's an app only solution and it's already there there are probably 15 of these uh, out there hmm? so i don't want to be rude here uh, but we should able to to learn huh? how to find a project that is able to satisfy all, all the requirements, okay? So this was initial idea. You see that two or three of them, or four, are act do actually have something good in them. They were not completely arti articulated enough, but uh, you can start working on those, okay? Um, okay, so if you have ideas in this period, discuss, create your groups, discuss with your friends, uh, present to your other friends from other courses probably that are not uh, uh, directly involved so that to get their to get their feedback and if you want to write us four or five lines uh, just to evaluate for having a feedback with us uh, uh, feel free to do so uh, or to share them so that we can maybe filter them saying okay this is missing or this is too complex uh, or this is out of scope or, or whatever so that we can have a, a faster feedback before the deadline mm, for the for the mm, for the vision document okay so this was about the, <laughs> the the main topic of this period which is finding projects our projects as i said uh, we have a time still a couple of weeks time or 10 days time 
to come up with good projects but but after we have a good idea hmm, uh, the problem becomes uh, organizing the work uh, in order to get to the result in time hmm? and uh, something that is difficult for us for us engineers to do is uh, to pace your work and not jump directly into the implementation hmm? and it's something which is uh, we are it's difficult to refrain from starting coding and doing some something no but uh, we are trying here to follow a process a simple one and the process means actually uh, doing things uh, in steps uh, with the, uh, in every step uh, should be uh, say well easy to understand uh, what is the goal what we are trying to do in these two weeks what you are trying to do in this other period and so on hmm? so that uh, we don't uh, make uh, wrong choices what is the problem with starting the implementation tomorrow the problem is that uh, probably we didn't reason about uh, the system as a whole enough or well enough and we will discover later that something we implemented is not needed or should have been done differently and something else something important is missing and so we'll start to metamorphosize or transform or destroy our project in order to fit something different into that okay so we should want we should have tried to avoid that hmm? uh, okay these are just some some uh, comics uh, about uh, uh, design processes but the real definition is uh, a design process is, uh, is a formulation of a plan hmm? we need a plan like uh, superheroes uh, do you have a plan yes to save the world no to help an engineer build a product with a specified goal hmm? or another uh, definition is uh, in, the, in our case uh, the formulation of, of a plan to help a team of engineers because we are not working alone we are working in teams in groups uh, uh, to build a system the definition is generally a product in our case it's an MEI system so it's something more specific we specify performance and functionality I, I've added here functionality goals so it's not just performance in terms of cost size uh, speed or whatever it's mostly for us functionality what is able to do hmm? you know the, this uh, is a very general definition that applies also to bridges uh, or streets uh, or cars or whatever so we are trying to find a plan hmm? a plan for escaping a problem uh, so in, in, in general, well, there are many methodologies. We, are, we will try to develop uh, one possible plan that I will describe uh, on seven different steps uh, that is more uh, suitable for the kind of projects uh, we are going to develop here. So it's not a design process for everything. It's a design process that is good for our type of project. I'll try to discuss the main steps. Uh, and uh, then at the end we'll try to simplify it because seven steps are too much too many sorry in uh, in the time that we have these are should be the logical steps but some of them we will try to skip them hmm? uh, with a uh, simplified process and uh, across this presentation every now and then i will show a slide like this with a deadline has just to remind us how the general process that we are trying to discuss also say not theoretical point of view how this general process fits uh, in our course fits in our deadlines uh, so you already know that deadline um, number zero is uh, the project uh, so it's already what we discussed last time the 22nd of March is ticking closer every second and uh, but I don't want to uh, worry you too much and um, the only suggestion that I have is start thinking and start sharing information hmm, so that we can converge. Okay, in general, uh, why do we need a plan in the first place? Why do we need a process? Aren't we smart enough to be able to find a solution when somebody gives us a problem? It turns out that no, we aren't. Uh, nobody of us is. Especially when you involve a number of people greater than one hmm? for at least uh, one user and one developer uh, 
it's already a disaster. If you increase the number of people, then it will become even worse. Why? Well, first of all, because uh, this is the a common problem, uh, problem of communication or understanding, mutual understanding. Okay, so a customer comes to you and explains what they need. And in the same millisecond in which they are explaining you what they need, you can be sure that what they are explaining is different from what they are thinking, which is even different from what they really need. And you will understand something even more different, and you will build something entirely different. It's normal. People understand the same words in different ways. People are only able to express themselves under the concept that they know, that they, that they own. If you're a customer, maybe you, you, don't know, you, want, you want to build a software for helping a friend uh, which have a, a grocery shop no? to keep track of their income or whatever. So they will talk about grocery items. They will talk about money. They will talk about concepts that they own. And they, there are a lot of information will not be explicit because for them it's usual, it's normal that things are in some time, in some way. And w you will understand, you'll listen to those words and you will try to interpret the same words with your engineering background, in which the same words mean something different. Or you don't know what they mean, you try to approximate with something that you know. So it's a mapping problem. So there's a lot of vignettes like, like this one that show that in the different phases of development of a project, uh, things can change and are, uh, you know, from different points of view. Uh, especially I like the, how the project was documented, this one, nothing. Hmm? You find a lot of software that you can turn in different places, but you can't understand what it does. Um, how the customer was, was built is also a very good one. And uh, here is also fancier. Uh, I, from this one, just when it was delivered in full winter, it was a, it's a nice period for, for a swing, but um, you can have fun in finding this. Okay, but these uh, are for fun, but are for real also. No? This is really happening. Unless we have a plan to avoid that uh, the same, what happens is that at the end, you deliver a product that your customer will reject. Say, saying, no, this is not what they wanted, okay? So we need to have a plan to avoid that. We want, there are many ways, many design processes, in particular for software. If you study software engineering, you, you will learn uh, some of them. Uh, we'll try to do something. We don't have a lot of time to, to dig into this topic in this course. Uh, we'll try to find one process that fits our needs uh, and simple enough to, to, to follow doesn't have too many iterations we don't, because we don't have too many resources to, the, to, to devote to this problem. And so actually we try to describe the plan, describe the process as a sequence of steps uh, and we'll try to be very clear what is the input and the output of every step. Hmm? We already know which is the first step, the starting point is the idea. And uh, the idea is uh, five to ten lines of text. Remember what you have to write on, on the Google document. This is the starting point. And the final point would be the full working prototype of the ambient intelligence system. Everything in between we have to create. You know, we understand how important are those starting ten lines because they already should contain all the most important information about what the system will do at the end. They cannot explain everything. There are only 10 lines at the end. And so it's better to leave out any detail that can change, that is not relevant, that is technology dependent, and leave there only the features, or the, the most important things. Okay, but once we have this idea, how do, how do we go forward? Well, it depends on also on the approach. If I were a company that sells uh, I don't know, smartphones, I would try to develop a process for getting down here that involves a lot of smartphones for the user, for the system, and so on. Because there's my business model, using a specific technology. 
Mm. If I'm selling, uh, you know, uh, connectivity, I will try to develop a project in which, in which for sure the connectivity will be important so that I can build my users on the connectivity that they use, okay? So there are a lot of methodology, design methodology, that start already from a given piece of technology that is part of your business model, and you want to create a project around the technology. We are not doing that, okay? We are trying to develop an approach that should be technology neutral. We don't care about which technology. Will it be, you know, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or Zigbee or I don't know. But I don't, right now, I don't care. It's not something that has been fixed uh, a priori at the beginning. The technology has not been fixed. We are free to explore. Maybe we will use a technology that today we don't know yet. Fine. Because we will discover that it's the best solution for us. So technologies should be selected during the process, not before the beginning of the process, right? Because we are interested in what the system does, not which components we put into the project. And uh, so the first point is uh, be technology neutral. Don't select technologies too early. Mm, try to do the technology selection, the component selection, later on. Probably for us it's steps number six or something like that. Five or six. Second uh, approach uh, uh, item is uh, try to find solutions, partial solutions, devices, technologies, libraries, frameworks, uh, tools, uh, whatever, that are already existing, and try to integrate with them. Don't start from scratch. Don't start from zero. Don't build uh, something by yourself if there is already something that can do the same job or similar job. So in, before starting to implement a functionality in code, try to find uh, or search a library that maybe includes that functionality in software. Or before building your sensor or your board, try to find whether some of the already available sensors can do. You will save a lot of time, and uh, we are connected to the first point. Our main uh, business model, let's say, is on delivering the features to the user. It's not on using our, our components. So we don't care if we are using somebody else's component. Trying to reuse already existing stuff moves the design from the development level to the integration level, when we can accomplish more in less time. We are not writing our own operating system from scratch every time. Okay? We are using what's already there. So we are trying, we try to learn to use existing systems. And try to refuse in your own mind to do something until you find you found that there's not already a solution available. Of course, single components could be available, software or hardware components, could be available and reused. The logic functionality of the system, that is yours. It's your added value. Put it together these components, making them work together, and making them deliver the functionality you love. Hmm? So, so these are the two main uh, drivers that help us shape this project. You see the seven steps are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Starting with the idea and closing with the uh, working process, uh, the working system. Mm -hmm. And every step is always, uh, always has the same structure. It has an input, an activity, and an output. And the output of a step is the input of the next step. Easy enough, right? And uh, this uh, is only one of the possible types of processes. It's called, uh, it's a, um, they call a waterfall process uh, that just falls, a waterfall, uh, you know, falls from top to bottom and never goes back. Water usually does, doesn't go back. Uh, processes in the reality go back through different iterations. So a waterfall model is quite a naive model, quite a simple model. It doesn't work for very complex cases. 
especially it doesn't work when the specifications are not very clear at the beginning to start with and will be discovered uh, mid-show. But for us, uh, it's enough. We don't, uh, we don't know to put uh, more complex processes. You see that uh, there is some going back here. Uh, and the going back uh, will start only when you start putting our hands into the te technology. On the left-hand side, on the first column of this process, we only are working with ideas, documents. We are formalizing our project. On the right-hand column, we are starting to implement it. And so when you are starting to implement something that looks very nice, very fine, surely correct on paper, it's wonderful on paper, when you start implementing that, you, can f you start finding a lot of things that don't work. Hmm? And so you need probably to go back and rethink some aspects, redo some decisions, and so on. Hmm? So it will not be so linear once you start putting your hands uh, uh, on the real software and uh, on the real hardware. But at least uh, we have uh, a clear goal. We know clearly what, how the system will behave. Be why? Because on the left-hand side, we, we did a good job. And we have a good uh, set of requirements for our project. So, okay, this is just a legend for, for, for the diagram. So every step will be described in this way. We have an activity that delivers some result, what is the output, and this result is also the, next, the, the input to the next activity. And as we said, we try to divide this process in two columns. The first one, we can call them the specification. Refining the initial idea, we start from the initial idea, we try to refine it, reason it, expand it, so at the end, the specification document that tells in more detail what the system would do. And then there is the implementation part that takes the specification and tries to turn it into a running system. You can ideally imagine that the specification and the development could be done by different people. Once you have a good specification for a system, anybody can follow the specification and start implementation. Because everything important about your system is in the specification. Hmm? So it will not be our case, because we are always the same team. But it's always important to, in the first column, we are shaping our system. We are deciding what it does what's in and what's out of the system, which functionality we want and which we don't care or we can skip. In the second case, we are trying to match the specifications. So we are not choosing whether this should be done or not, or having new ideas about the system. No, we are trying to have good ideas about how to implement those functionalities. But the set of functionality is already fixed. It's on the other column. Because otherwise, we keep going back and forth about adding and removing things uh, while you are developing them, and you don't understand, you're not converging to the end. OK. And uh, I'm trying to map these steps into our schedule. And you see that uh, um, the middle of middle end of May is the turning point. OK? So uh, March, April. And the beginning of May is a specification, and from mid-May to mid-June, or the end of June, is the implementation part, okay? More or less. So let's start one by one uh, by describing these steps. Step one, problem statement. So we have the idea. So remember, we are starting from a 5 to 10 lines description. And uh, we create uh, a description of the system. What are the problems that the system is trying to solve? My system is useful for, for what? What are the benefits that the system brings to the users, to the environment, to the developers, or whatever? 
so first you should identify a problem oh i want to develop a smart glasses for what what is the problem you're trying to solve first then you tell me that you you are going to solve them with glasses maybe but if i don't know the problem how can i evaluate your solution so be clear about what problem we want to solve and uh, what kind of benefits the solution to this problem can bring so imagine trying to sell your idea to someone else other people will want to pay for having your system why should they pay what's in for them you know that they, if they pay you you know what's in for you you get money but what's what's in for them are they willing to pay for having a given solution to a given problem they're not going to pay you because you are good or because uh, uh, the the glasses look nice or no, because it solves some specific problem for them they get a benefit they put some of their money in exchange for some benefit in their life in their activities so the goal here would be creating a summary of what the system does for the users what the problem so what problem solves and what benefits we have from for the users um, so this we with this step will be after after this deadline so after the 22nd of, of march when we have the the vision uh, approved so it's already what you are describing now is something very easy to write uh, that doesn't have, that need to be formalized or whatever but in this case uh, we then then after that you will st start from this text uh, and try to extract and uh, highlight these items of course it's not bad starting to think about them hmm? but we are, we are not you are not required to do them yet so the idea is uh, what we call the vision of your project so we are starting from five to ten lines we are moving to one page hmm? so we are trying to expand what it's already in your idea a vision about uh, a world in which your project exists about users being engaged with your project with your system hmm? how you view them what is your vision you don't need to describe technology we don't want you to describe technology it's not needed hmm? uh, what is needed is that we define the target environment so where is the system going to be used who are the users People say, okay, this product is for any user. I don't believe it. You already have some target segment of the population. There's no project that, that is good for everybody. It's good maybe for people that who are doing sports. It's good for people that are working. It's good for uh, people that are traveling or whatever. But it's always a subset. Hmm? If you are saying, okay, this, this project works everywhere and for everybody then you haven't thought well enough about your project because you don't have uh, a well-defined problem okay that, that doesn't exist a problem that is everywhere for everybody no there are a lot of specific problems and each problem to be tackled is uh, happens in a specific place for a specific group of users and since uh, we say that in this environment this set of users will have a problem and the problem in the engineering term means opportunity we have the opportunity of helping the users in that in that specific context how how do we support the users from the user point of view try to tell that has the user would, would would describe it you're not telling okay i'm putting a motorized lever uh, in order to move uh, the pantograph no you, you should describe it like you push a button and uh, the desk disappears how the user would describe it the technology for doing that is your business it's not the user's business 
So describing in, the, in this page of vision, trying to have this point of view, and also hinting at the features, whether it's sensitive, whether it's responsive, adaptive, transparency, ubiquitous intelligence, so we can describe that. Imagine having created a sort of brochure huh, of your or a leaflet of your project. On one page, maybe there is something for the user, and on the back there are some additional information about the four steps, the, the six features, and so on. Hmm? The idea is trying to sell, not really for money, but at least the idea, to a non-engineer, to a people who is representative for the, of the user population. So try to find uh, a user or somebody. Uh, if you are doing something for, I don't know, a bus driver, try to stop a bus driver uh, and tell them about this uh, project or the idea and get and understand what they tell you. The way they explain you that probably the problem that you are trying to solve is not a problem, really. Or there are bigger problems. So they can give you a lot of ideas to improve. But only if you talk to the people who, be, who could benefit, will be the future beneficiary of your project. So how to write this page? Some tips. No technology. Did I say that already? Probably 15 times. It will never be enough. Uh, we know that should be feasible. We should have an idea. OK, I already saw something. I, I'm sure I can do it. OK. It will take time for me to understand exactly how. I don't have this time now. Right now, I, sh I need to be sure that it's feasible, that it can be done, and it's just for my own no, tranquility, for my own knowledge, but I don't need uh, to write this with description of how it will be done in this step. <coughs> Start simple. One problem, one solution. It will be hard enough hmm, to find a complete MEI system that just focuses on one problem. Too often, I see some uh, ideas or solutions that try to have a long list of ideas. I, I, the system will do this and that. Additionally, can also do that. Okay. But try to focus oh, of the different items that you mentioned. Which is the most important? Which is the one that gives you more value out of your project? Start to focus on that. Make it full, full MEI, all the four steps and so on, but one feature or a small set of features. What happens is that people maybe have an idea good for sensing, another idea good for acting, and they try to put them together. It doesn't work. Hmm? Uh, you cannot have uh, two sets of two legs and say this is a chair. Uh, they will break. They should be, they should be consistent. They should be coherent, hmm? cohesive. So uh, try to find, uh, or, you know, invest in finding a good idea, even if, if it's small. I don't, we don't care. A good project that solves well a single problem. And this is also a strategy for company, for startups, uh, or whatever. No? Uh, in the startup jargon, they call it the MVP, the minimum viable product. So the product that is the minimum size, the minimum possible size, it also implies the minimum possible cost and the minimum possible development time, which is still viable, that does something good, that could be already sold, put on the market, used for testing, or whatever. Uh, so this is our goal. Something minimum that already shows the potential. It's complete, shows the full potential, but it doesn't have additional features. Third tip, uh, pitch it. Try to explain it to other people. New people, people you find on the bus. They will think you're crazy, but you are probably. Uh, so try to tell it to somebody else. And also in the, in the page, in the description, the vision document that you write, uh, try to tell a story, to describe people using it, 
and people being happier or uh, from getting some benef benefits from using the system. Mm -hmm. But it's very useful to, to, to start telling other people, especially if they are not engineers. Because when you, if, if other people are not engineers, when you start speaking engineerese language, they will stop you. They will tell you, I'm not understanding anything. What do you mean? And so you will realize that you are not talking the people's language or the user's language, but you're talking your own language. You sh we shouldn't do that. At this point, it's too early. Google it. Stupid enough, but if you have an idea for uh, you know, a smart uh, car, a smart eating system, a smart thermostat, a smart jacket, whatever, probably there are 15 different uh, project ideas, uh, startups that work on the same idea. Find what they are doing. You will find that some of them or many of them will have very stupid ideas. Yours is better. Some maybe have some angle that you can copy from. We don't need to create a startup. We need to, to, to make competition. We only need to, to make a better idea out of our own. So we find similar ideas or ideas that work in the same domain and try to copy the good parts uh, and to understand which are the bad parts uh, of other people's projects uh, uh, so that we can avoid them. Hmm? And so once you have a name for your project, the first thing is put this name on Google and see what happens. And involving users describing, discussing, listening to other users, hmm? because usually users know better about what they need. Hmm? So it's an uh, important rule of thumb, users know better, always, always remember that. In doubt, if you don't know whether A is more important than B, ask the user, don't decide for, your, for yourself. Except when they don't, what does it mean? It means that in some cases, you can't rely on the user, so you can't rely on the user to give you information about how to how you should create a project, especially when, especially when your project uh, is about uh, some activity or some device that doesn't exist yet, where the users don't have experience. It's very difficult to have, to ask a user, how would you feel with a device uh, that will I don't know, uh, you can wear on your necklace uh, and people don't, don't have that. So they can't, they can't imagine something that is not there yet. So people are very good at, at telling what they are doing, what are their problems, what are the difficulties now. They cannot imagine what kind of technology you could describe that you could bring them. Huh? So you never go to a user and say, okay, what's the, the innovation you would like for the next year? User say, well, you are the engineer, not me. You bring me the innovation, I will throw them away if I don't like them. But it's not the, you cannot ask the user to innovate, but you can ask the user to evaluate. Hmm? So this is the part of the, the initial part of the project thinking that helps us make a good proposition with value in it. Something that when you t tell to people, they will say, ah, interesting. First part, good. Interesting. I didn't think about that. These two symptoms are good. Hmm? If they ask you, repeat that, please, it's not good. Huh? And, um, and if they tell you, yes, 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 it's also not good because they are just listening for. Okay. Uh, all of this is the work that immediately follows the definition of the project. So the deadline for this, one page, okay? You're not asking 100 pages. One page with this focus is due the 1st of April, okay? So the, the 22nd, you should have five to 10 lines, and uh, one week later, one week for writing one page, you don't have to code, you don't have to write, you don't have to, uh, to, have to implement anything. Only think about that and try to validate your idea, improve the idea. Five to ten idea, the, the first five to ten lines are for us, among us, so that we can try, to, we will un try to understand your idea. After that, you, you have to formalize it so that it would be nice also for other people to look at, not just internally to the, 
the course or to the teacher. Okay? And uh, this uh, deadline would, would also involve creating a website, a simple website, it will also be a one page, that you will keep working on during the course, and the website will grow during the course, you will add all the deliverables there. So we are not making bureaucracy. We are, we, are, we are not asking you to create a lot of documents that you can send uh, and uh, PDFs uh, that you uh, will ship and so on. The, these deliverables are not separate documents, are new information that you upload on the website. So at the 1st of April, we should have a website for, for, for every project, and in that website there should be the information about the vision. So the environment, the user, the problem solved, the MEA steps, the MEA features. Okay, when we are closer to that, I show, uh, will show you a template, uh, just to, to a checklist, uh, more a checklist than a template, uh, that tell you what, uh, what information should be there in the website. But then how you, how you organize that in the website is up to you, hmm? how you present this information. The important is that the information will be there in the, in the website. So at every step, at every deliverable, the website will be more and more complete. You can have a look at the website for other years' projects, so you see the full, uh, of course, version, the full complete version at, at the end of the course, hmm? like yours will be. So at every step, you add, you add information there. So the website will track your progress also through the course. And uh, at the 1st of April, you should create this. Uh, and uh, the next lab, uh, on the 3rd of April, we will go group by group and try to give you some comments about what you, what, uh, what you have done in this, uh, uh, in this first uh, step, hmm? in this vision document. So this is our first step. Making the idea explicit. Highlighting the value of the idea and highlighting the value for the user. Uh, this is an example. Hmm? I, I made this example just to, to show what, what is the level of, uh, of detail uh, with a very strange or stupid uh, ambient intelligence system like a smart uh, wake up uh, system. Hmm? In the morning, we, we all love waking up. And so this uh, will make your wake ups uh, better and better. And uh, this is what I, I would have written probably, hmm, a bit shorter because uh, just to fit it in one slide, uh, about the first deliver, the vision of the project. A user requires their own personalized wake up experience. A user will never miss a wake up call. Every morning will be a pleasing experience and they will never be late. Your how, your devices, your calendars will team up to personalize the optimal wake up call, personalized to you, and personalized to your day's schedule, location, and mood. Hmm? I'm not, I, there's not a single technology word here, you, know, you notice. Probably while you read this, you see a lot of technology. You see calendars, you see clouds, you see smartphones, you see uh, um, ringtones, and a lot of stuff, but it's not written there. The user will not see it. You will see it because you, st you will start thinking about what's behind that. How can I build that? But the focus here is on the user. Your house, a lot of items in your house will help you with this daily task, waking up. The system will exploit different means to wake up users in the morning. We'll combine ringing, turning on the lights, the radio, other methods according to the developable devices and the user preferences. It will automatically adjust time according to the user's agenda. The classes. When the user is not at home, maybe in a total, it, uh, it avoids activating at home devices. It's intelligent, it's context aware, it knows whether you are in your house or the house should start ringing, or you are away, and so the house should be quiet because other people maybe want to sleep, and if you are uh, um, elsewhere, you will only use end user, only use user devices, sorry, it's a typo here. It will detect when the user actually wakes up or is already up and will shut down and so on. Hmm? So this is a scenario that I'm describing. A user activity and something that the system does for the user. Hmm? And, uh, okay. Um, this kind of description should be in your vision document and then we'll start uh, describing the different is there sensing there? Yes. Is there acting? Yes. 
is there interacting? It may be set in the preferences and so on. And, uh, and is there reasoning? Yes, because I need to follow the user and understand the context and so on. So it's a very simple system here. You see, focus, one goal, one feature, but the full MEI projects are around that. So this will be the first step. Start to have a look at the second step, which is uh, a bit more demanding. It's a longer step. So right now we have one page for which the user, okay, if we, if we were a company, with this one page document, we could go out and start selling the product. Because except for the price, there's already all the information that the user needs to understand whether the system is good for them or not. It's still not precise. Hmm? So there are some sentences like, uh, according to the available devices. Wh which one, sorry? Which are the supported devices? Every device in the world, no, it's not possible. We should choose a subset of devices, okay? Um, user preferences, what are actually these preferences? What information do we need? Uh, there are a lot of details that are missing here. The user probably doesn't notice them too much. But if we uh, were to start the implementation, there's a lot of information missing. What do we need to do here? So the next step will be to reread this from the developer point of view and trying to find the requirements of the system. We have two steps about requirements. Let me go back to the overall picture. It's called requirement elicitation and requirement definition. Elicitation means uh, pulling them out, finding them. And the definition is writing them down. So some requirements will be already easy to write, easy to define. And for some other requirements, probably we need to do some work to discover them. Maybe, I don't know, here, about uh, the user, when the user is not at home. Hmm? There is a strong assumption here, the user, one, single. So, is this system for a single person or for just one person inside a family? Or should it be a system that covers all people in the family. Mm, so every user will have their different personalization. Or it's just one user that's using it, that uses the system and the others don't. Or we assume that a person is living alone. alone. I don't know. I don't know which is the best way. I know which is the simplest. The simplest is just one person and leave them alone. But is this of good value enough? And so it's, these are a requirement of the system. We should decide that. How should the system work? And uh, we need to do some work to understand which choice is better. And work uh, how? Talking to users, for example. Or seeing what products are there and what other products are doing. So we need to do a little research to decide for this, hmm? for example. Or User preferences. What kind of preferences you should put? Maybe how much time you, you want to wake, be wa being woken up before. So I need uh, maybe one hour, and you only need half an hour because of your routine. So this is probably a variable that should go into this personalization. But uh, you could choose the ringtone, for example, because Every, every phone does it, so why can't our system also let the user choose the ringtone? And do we need other personalization? I don't know. Let's talk with some users to find out whether we need something else, something more. Hmm? And so on. Hmm? So, uh, it's easy probably to see what is missing and the responses to some of these will be easy. 
and so it's just a matter of writing them down, and, and the response to other items will be more demanding. It requires a little, a little more work uh, to understand it. And this uh, elicitation phase means going out and considering the needs and the opinions of other people, of the users of the system. Did I say talk to users here already? And uh, the stakeholders of the system. So maybe not the users, but the other family members of the primary user. What do other things, other people think? So people that are in some way involved this, with the system. So you are doing something maybe on a classroom environment, so you need to speak to the students that are users, to the teachers that are users, and maybe also to the people doing the cleaning, because they are not maybe a users of the system, but they are interested in the system working, if they're doing something about the waste, for example. Hmm? Sometimes you see a classroom at the end of the day, uh, not here, I, I'm quite uh, pleased. But in some other cases, the, at the end of the day, you find everything under the desk, uh, over the desk, bottles, paper, and whatever, and the bins will be empty. So that would be a, 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 a problem in which the users are a given set of people, but the stakeholders. A stakeholder means a person which is not directly involved with the system, but will get a benefit, an indirect benefit, if the system works well. Hmm? And people that have a stake in the system. There's a, an interest in the system working well. So talking to people will help you see your problem from different angles, the problem you're trying to solve from different angles, and decide which features are more important in the system. Because at the end, we will uh, probably have uh, 100 ideas, 200, 500 ideas, and only 15 can be implemented in the time that we have. So which are the ones that are more important? Not the ones that I like more programming or the ones that are easier to implement. The ones that are more important for the users. This is the, the question that you are trying to solve in this step. Collect information, evaluate carefully, objectively. So don't be prevented saying, OK, I'm right. I am right. So if you're saying something different, you are wrong, by definition. Hmm? No. Uh, we try to talk and listen and, and possibly adapt your vision. So we already have this uh, vision document published, but we find out that what, seemed, what looked like a good idea actually is not appreciated by anyone. Or people will, will find a, fight against it. I, would, I, I, wouldn't want, I don't want that. I don't like it. And at the third or fourth, I don't like it. Maybe it's time to change it. It turns out my great idea wasn't so great. Hmm? It happens. No shame. Hmm? And so we pull out, elicitate, extract these uh, uh, requirements and try to adapt our vision to those. If, it, if this was a real product, this step would be essential, fundamental. What people will do, will do you know, paper prototypes and go there and try them with users. And call users to a focus group, do an interview. Before spending money on development, you want to be really sure that at the end the product will be interesting for the users, that will buy it. So at that point, uh, you should spend time hmm, in doing this elicitation. We don't have time for doing that well, because we would not need to learn, uh, we would need to learn about uh, methodology for working with users, for doing user studies, and so on. Hmm? It would be a very interesting topic, but we have to sacrifice something. So in this course, this step will not be explicit. Uh, what I try to ask you is to speak with people and try to get the, their feedback without any explicit uh, formal process, focus group or documentation and so on. Mm -hmm. So try to get user input and not just to go on your own. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, mm, 
you will see uh, for, for the final project uh, whether people are able to explain why they're good or not. Hmm? So uh, it's not a formal step. This step will be skipped in this project, uh, in, this, sorry, in this course. Uh, but remember, when you are doing something bigger, this is essential. OK, this is just a definition of users versus stakeholders. That you can read to have a better idea than when I, uh, what I suggested before. And uh, I, I repeat, we are not doing this. In a real project, uh, we will try uh, to, uh, to use a me design methodology. So have the, in the design process, having a user-centered design methodology means that the users should be involved in the design of the system from the beginning to try the ideas, to try the first prototypes, to try the interface, to try and to buy and sell it. Uh, so that at every step, uh, the user should be able to give their feedback on the system and uh, they will improve the system while you are developing it. So there are specific uh, methodologies, UCD, they're called UCD-centered methodologies, that help you in doing that. There are uh, ways, uh, uh, tasks uh, do, to do that will help you. They don't cost too much. It means maybe every once a month you bring in four or five users, you buy them a coffee or something more, and uh, they will spend a couple of hours discussing your project or testing a very early prototype. And they, the information that they give you is very important. They will, they will find bugs. They will find the bad ideas uh, very quickly that you will never see. Because you are seeing the project from the inside. They are seeing it from the outside. So it's a totally different vision. Um, OK, we should do that in the, ro in the wrong way. Uh, so in the right way in the, and not in the wrong way, which is uh, what these comics uh, describe. But I will leave them for you at home. Um, so there are methodologies, there are standards on how to conduct uh, user studies and uh, human-centered designs. Uh, we don't go into the details here. There are methods. So for example, imagining fictional users. OK, I know that this project is for some kind of user. OK, let's give them a name. Let's give them a job. Let's give them an age. So we start thinking about our users as real persons, not as abstract items. And so what John would do in that situation? Uh, you know that John is uh, 32 years old, as, as one kid, uh, and uh, I don't know, it works uh, abroad. And so you, it's, very, it's easier for you to see how users will, uh, will, uh, will use the system if you give a users a personality. Try to describe scenarios. So short stories, a bedtime story, two minutes, where your users, your personas, are interacting with the system. And uh, what are the sequences of interaction, the steps? So there are, if you, if you open a book on, on this topic, there are, you will, they will list you a lot of different tricks and techniques uh, that you can use. Uh, that help you understand the system. And at the end, uh, you will have uh, understood better your system, because you have tried to discuss it with others and to bring in other people's point of view. Um, you will change priorities for your system features. Something that looked a good idea doesn't look so important. And something else that was not so relevant, maybe you thought it was stupid, it turns out that the users really like it. So you are shifting your priorities of the features. You are bringing in something that maybe was not so important, and you're letting out something that is nice for you, but the users don't like it or don't see value in that. So you adjust the value, or you improve the value of the system by adjusting the features that are supported by, by the system to the user's opinions hmm, and feedback. And also you gather rather constraints. You may be learn that people wouldn't like it if it's too big or if it's too small, if it's lost easily or whatever, or if it's, if it's too li loud. Or, and so there are additional constraints 
that's why we call them requirement elicitation because we are discovering new things of course at the end the system is yours so this the decision is yours you cannot bring in every possible user suggestion because otherwise it would be something with 12 million different features because every user has something different it's your job to pull in all the suggestions and make it a product with some internal consistency with some philosophy this is my system i'm not pulling something just because a user would like something else which is outside the scope of my project so it's always med mediating the information from the user with your vision of the project so transforming what is a good idea into a system that users want 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 to use and uh, want to buy if uh, you are intrigued in this uh, kind of uh, topics uh, i give you only to a couple of suggestions so this one is a scholarly book so something very formal very precise uh, about it is inter uh, how users interact with systems if you was, if you want something lighter easier to read which is still thick but uh, but it's very fun it's called uh, the design of everything everyday things you can recognize this is a teapot or a coffee pot where to pour the coffee you will burn yourself no way huh? no way to do it uh, to, to, to avoid that okay because it, that you could okay there's not a, so you understand the design of this thing is wrong if at the end this is the philosophy behind this book if at the end you are burned it's not your fault it's a bad design if a system is difficult to use it's not the user stupid it's the system interface which is better design if you go to a door and you don't know whether to pull or push or you need a sign that tells you pull or push it's not your fault that you don't remember you didn't do the sign it's the door that didn't, doesn't give you hints uh, for example that door can't be pulled no way <laughs> there's no handle you can only push it you don't need a sign to say this bar this red big bar should be pulled it's a red big bar the only thing you can do with a red big bar is to push it okay so there's only one way and the only way is the right way this is how we should design our systems there's only one way of doing a thing or there are many different ways but all the possible ways are the right one you don't need the instructions you don't need feedback you don't need the users to correct their errors because errors become nearly impossible so this good is very good this book is very good uh, for helping you starting to think in this way and it's also very fun to read easy to use and of course with this is not an additional feature like this comic suggests it's a way of mind in define in thinking about the other features you can say okay this is a design and then at the end i want it easy to use at the end as the additional feature no? it should be the first one and something that drives you okay see you on thursday